Hello and welcome to this telecoms.com webinar in association with Aptilo Networks called Building a Carrier Class Wi-Fi Network with 3G Offloading. I'm Dwayne Pal Sahota, Senior Staff Writer at telecoms.com and today we will be learning from Nordic Carrier Telecenera's 10 plus years of experience in building the largest carrier Wi-Fi network in the region why it decided to pioneer SIM authentication for the Wi-Fi network. We'll also discover the next steps to be taken with deployment of SIM-based roaming. So to help us do that, I'm joined by two experts who will explain this in more detail and take your questions at the end. They are Tora Bjorklund, Wireless Network System Specialist at Telesonera, and Tor Bjorn Ward, CEO at Aptilo Networks. Our speakers will be each making a presentation on this topic and will field your questions, which you can make at any point during the webinar, at the end. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to our first speaker, Tor Bjorn. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Torbjorn Ward. I'm the CEO of Aptilo Networks. And again, welcome to this webinar. I think it will be a very interesting webinar. Aptilo Networks is, is a company that is a software solution company working in the area of Wi-Fi and carrier class Wi-Fi. This webinar, as you all well know, will be about building a carrier class Wi-Fi network with 3G offloading. The agenda today is essentially there is a short introduction by myself, and I will introduce the company. We also have a very, very interesting session by Tori Bjorklund from Talia Sonra, and he will be telling you about uh, a large and a great network that they have built during the last 10 or 12 years. It's going to be very interesting. And then the last session is that I will end with about 10 minutes or so talking about the Aptilo solution as well. And as you can see on this slide, there are three symbols, and that will be coming back throughout this presentation. And those are the three key pillars of, of the solution, a carrier class Wi-Fi network itself, the uh, SIM uh, authentication methodologies, and then innovative integration with mobile core for policy and charging. So an overview for the Aptilo Networks. Um, the company was founded in 2001. We're currently headquartered out of Stockholm in Sweden. We have offices in the U.S. And we have offices in Asia Pacific out of Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Uh, when we founded the company, we always wanted to build a solution and we saw a need for a solution to manage large Wi-Fi networks that operators and carriers of sorts would be building. We were all coming from the mobile infrastructure and carrier side and therefore saw the need for this kind of solution. We wanted to build a mobile network infrastructure like backend and, and, and structure. We saw a lot of products coming out to the market uh, that were smaller Wi-Fi hotspot appliances like products, and this is something that we did not think was going to cut it for operators deploying larger networks. And so we ended up with this software solution that does exactly this, access and service control and billing control and policy management. And since then, we've also added WiMAX, 3G, and LTE support to our solution. The software itself has been deployed now with uh, over 120 customers and in over 60 countries. And out of those 60 uh, countries and 120 customers, there are more than 30 mobile operators that have deployed our solution with different kind of Wi-Fi and wireless networks. Apart from uh, software licensing, we also have a strong option in managed services, which essentially extends pieces of managing the network itself, but predominantly is about offering a hosted service model of the Wi-Fi service management solution that I will be presenting a little bit later. The company itself has uh, experienced a good profitable growth, and we have also acquired several competitors in this area. And therefore, we humbly consider ourselves the leader in this market of carrier class Wi-Fi service management. The way that we have been able to deploy our solutions in this many countries is also about our delivery model. We partner up with many of the leading global players. We understand that customers want to see one solution offering from one company when they purchase and buy these things. 
So why do we actually have this webinar? Well, the key uh, issue at stake here is really the 3G mobile data crunch. It's all about offloading traffic to Wi-Fi in one way or another, different drivers, and we were going to hear some of the drivers that Telia Sonra have seen. But common to most of these situations is essentially an explosive growth in the mobile data applications. There has been a good growth in the area of laptops, and USB modems, of course, but it's really the proliferation of smartphones and the use of mobile data applications that have been driving this. There are questions around at this point in time about the justifiable capex for these kind of capacity expansions that are required in the 3G networks. And we see also that in the established markets, there's a really, really strong demand for fast and mobile implement from, from the end users. At the same time as in the emerging markets, there's a very, very strong uptake in the adoption of wireless internet. So mobile operators that see some five times growth in different kind of smart devices, whether it's smartphones, tablets, etc., and the fact, and, and this has been fairly well seen in many different networks that smartphones produce and consume somewhere around 30 times more traffic than normal phones, then 5 times 30 mathematically is 150 times higher traffic need. And that is the big issue at stake here to handle that in the best way. There are a number of mobile operators that are not reaching any capacity limits at this time, but it's all about staying ahead of the curve. And what is an interesting aspect then is the fact that Wi-Fi can be a good alternative in certain traffic areas with a very high speed and a lower production cost. So we're also going to be at the Mobile World Congress. You're all welcome to come and meet us. If you would like to schedule a meeting, just send us a mail to the indicated email address here on this slide at events at Attila.com, and we'll be doing the best we can to cater for this. Thank you, Torbjörn. So uh, I'm responsible for the wireless network systems on uh, Telia Sonora, and also with the development of that. I will uh, cover the uh, following topics here. The introduction to our wireless service, Telesonera and Home Run Wireless Zone, and uh, give you a brief of the uh, background of us, and of course the uh, implementation of the SIM authentication, and those parts there, why we do this, and, uh, and also some facts about it how it works with the, the different network 3G and, and Wi-Fi, and of course technical impacts and, and uh, terminal readiness, are they or not. And uh, then some conclusion and uh, what's our strategy. Telesonar is the largest mobile and fixed line operator in the Nordic. Uh, and the home run wireless zone is uh, also one of the largest Wi-Fi networks in the world. We have approximately 5,000 locations in, in the Nordic countries uh, and the Baltics. And uh, location is the, the ordinary ones, uh, hotel, airports, institutions, corporations, restaurants, malls, and uh, a lot of other public places. The architecture has, from the beginning, been a carrier-grade architecture, and that's important to, to uh, as an operator, to be uh, acting as a, as a carrier-grade service. Also, the bundle, both mobile and fixed line, will uh, can use the, the wireless zones. Uh, we are also providing uh, credit card and SMS payment in, in, uh, in our service here and uh, guest access to enterprises. We were one of the first to actually offer SIM authentication and, and to make the Wi-Fi as a, as a 3GPP network. And today we are most probably the largest SIM enabled network in the world. Some of, uh, of our uh, background here. The history of Home Run started back in 1999 and, and uh, we had a decision to, to launch the public Wi-Fi network. October 1999 was the first uh, site put into operations, and from that the journey started. 
we had uh, in the beginning flat rate subscriptions mainly for business travelers and, and uh, those because it was quite ex uh, expensive equipment. And the uh, initial focus was on the airports and, and, uh, and of course after the airports the hotel was and, and conference and, and then it went on to, to different corporations, hospitals, restaurants and, and other places. As we started, we, we uh, went for the uh, carrier grade uh, deployment, so uh, that has been in, in, in our scope all the way. And uh, high-end technology and, and, and vendors, and, and uh, that's important. Also, the, the backhauling is quite important. And uh, control of the usage to maintain the, the capacity and, and that stuff, you have to do a control of the of the policy, and um, mainly we did that in the network edge to, to prevent the expensive capacity. When we started in 1999, we didn't have the, the takeoff as we expected. Uh, it was quite a high price to start, so in 2001 we, we actually discovered that, well, we have to find some other way to, to, to give access to customer, and we, we start the scratch card. And that would be a, a tremendous success. We, we produced many, many, many millions of that. Uh, 2001, the first uh, roaming agreement, uh, we settled that. And now, back in 2004, we bundled it with a mobile data subscription. And uh, we did the same with the fixed broadband back in 2007. Last year, we actually was able to launch the uh, SIM authentication and uh, and of course as some device was was quite ready and it gave us a huge uptake and, and uh, as you can see especially iPhone and iPad was the the target there some challenges to build a carrier class service I have some of those here not not all at the most important here to keep up with the user and their behavior is the most problematic part, I think, since overnight they can change behavior and new device come in with some different behaviors and so on. And of course, to get all those places in a remote areas and, and uh, to get them high capacity because people using the Wi-Fi, they are moving around like wolf packs using the capacity. And um, normally they, they use quite high capacity since uh, they are used to that by Wi-Fi. Maintain the quality of the service because uh, some of those using the service will of course have viruses and, and other stuff. And to be able to handle those behaviors, it's important because it's a shared network. Everyone who is using it has to share it in some way. And uh, to be able to do that, you, you have to select a system that is uh, capable of handling all those uh, issues that can turn up in your network. So it's uh, the scalability and the flexibility is it's really, really important in, in this sense. So when, when you have start building it, it will be probably go faster and faster and more, and more sites want to join and to put the, the rollout in the, in the faucet here, you have to have an effective way of doing that. Some of our sites we are building with uh, just to read in an Excel file to the network and then hit uh, the go. So um, that's a very, very important. And of course, when it comes to the network events, be able to, to see those events coming and, and also act on those so you can, you can prevent the, the network from uh, being overloaded and, and, and so on. Uh, there's a lot of events going on in the network that you didn't even know that could happen. For example, the, the Windows update, it could sometimes uh, produce a, a stunning 2,300 sessions from just one user, and um, that's a problem. The last point here is uh, the site acquisition. That has to be, uh, that's an important part because uh, 
to handle the sites because they want to have some benefit on your on, on the network and it's a symbiosis where you can uh, produce capacity you can sell capacity and you can also serve the the site itself so uh, it needs a dedicated organization uh, and of course they need to select the right site uh, what site is the best site is it a gas station or is it a hotel that's important and also every site owner has their own demands so to get them to be comfortable with what you can produce why would we do uh, sim authentication in home run well smartphones and, and those devices that they will uh, love wi-fi better than the 3g of course uh, if you look at the, the round trip delays in the 3g network and on the wi-fi there's a, a quite a big difference and then the user will of course uh, notice that and uh, there's a lot of functionality designed only to use Wi-Fi and of course to do that it's, uh, it's important to automate the, the connection and uh, it has to be instant like the 3GPP normal authentication you just in some cases you have a pin code or some cases you don't have but it's, it's just turning on and, and you are authenticated. You don't have to use any username or password that takes time to, to type in and to remember. And security is really important as well in the Wi-Fi. Uh, there's a problem handling keys and that in, uh, in the Wi-Fi network. So in, in our case, we can have reused the, the encryption keys on the SIM cards. And uh, optimization here, of course, where you can actually use the networks that we have. For Telesonar uh, behalf, we are using Wi-Fi 2G, 3G, and 4G as well. So, But we have to utilize all those networks to be able to provide all the bandwidth that our customer needs today. And, and of course, you look at new smartphones and those they are they're using, for example, new 4G S. Uh, iPhone, it's consumed three times more than its older one. For so, uh, of course, that that's important. And of course, we can we can do some savings here as well, since we are using uh, the same identity MC, MSI's DN, and also that we also handle the the billing chain. The indoor coverage are easier to provide here in this case. So we can connect to, to our mobile network even if we are indoor, underground, for example, where it could be some tricky to get connections. So uh, what have you learned since the launch here? When it comes to terminals, some, of course, are, are quite ready for, for SIM authentication. And, and uh, there's, of course, a lot of terminals that's, that's not ready yet. But we do have a network now. And uh, in that case, it's possible for them to develop those uh, functionality. So someone has to start to, to build a network before you can have all terminals ready. And uh, in the terminals, we have seen that the automatic provisioning is, is important. Uh, for example, operator setting pushed out. That's very important. Uh, of course, you can't, as an operator, push out updates. Uh, because uh, as many customers are right now, they are suspicious about uh, SMS coming and telling you to, to uh, answer yes or no on that. So what we saw that it was when we did uh, the, the customer did the upgrade to, uh, for example, OS 5, then they accepted the profile. And it was a huge increase. We can actually nearly see the hour when it started to, to, to boost up. So from that, uh, there's a huge uptake, actually. And of course, when it comes to uh, terminals that has to be configured manually, it has to be quite clear and simple to do that because it's, a, it's quite tricky anyway to, to understand what they, what's happening. When Wi-Fi is using the SIM card, it's a completely new, new world for them. As it is, when when you when you do manual setup, it will take uh, 
longer time to have impact on the, the user if if you have to do that. And of course, uh, some alternative methods for those devices that can't have a SIM card enabled. You, you do have to have that still and in the foreseen future as well. This is uh, showing a little bit of the chain that the user is uh, traveling with the authentication. And uh, as you can see here, the user is uh, up here in the right corner, uh, talks to the access point. We have about 25,000 access points, and uh, they have to be configured with another SSID on a separate VLAN. And that's because of the security settings. The EP authentication will require radius functionality in the access point. As you can see here, the access point is connected to the uh, access gateway or the net access server, let's call it as well. And it acts as a radius proxy then and, and uh, forward all the messages through that. And it's also the aggregation point from uh, all the APs since we can't uh, aggregate all those uh, devices to one single point. And uh, the next step down there, you can see it says uh, service management and Wi-Fi is actually the AAA layer. Here you can see we have 15 pieces of them. That, of course, is to build the redundant service and also cope with the amount of, of access requests coming in from the access point and the customer. Next step is to transfer this to uh, the HLR actually, and, and, and to convert the uh, radius message towards the HLR, we have the gateway, the, the uh, SIM authentication gateway. So uh, it can also have a uh, diameter in it, uh, so you can, you can actually connect it to the 3GPP core and uh, maintain other services as well, and also fetch data from that as well if you want to. Straightforward task with the uh, Aptilo SIM authentication server here, and uh, working great as it is. Well, here, here is two pictures showing a little bit of SIM authentication and, and also the handover here. Although this is a ping and it's not TCP, but uh, however, you can see on the left picture here, you can see the round trip time, the uh, RTT is. 355. You can see in package 24 it's, it's changing to 31 and that's where the traffic went over to the Wi-Fi and also containing a 1x authentication and then the traffic carry on there. And uh, so it was going from edge to Wi-Fi here. The right page is also the opposite from Wi-Fi, you can see the round trip time, 52 milliseconds. When we change back to uh, Edge, you can see the round trip time, 355 in the uh, sequence number 20 there. So uh, this is how it works today. And of course, a lot of uh, application are, are uh, li well, like Spotify, YouTube, uh, they are buffering and, and also handling a near similar handover. So will most probably work quite okay. If you look at the terminals and the readiness for SIM authentication, the top model as, as this here is uh, actually the iPhone that has really good support for this. It actually supports this over, over the air and, and uh, since it pushed out the operator settings, adding this functionality. And also that could be why some 97% of the device mainly is using iPhone, iPad. However, it's using EPSIM. And as you see here, BlackBerry, Nokia, and uh, they are actually using EAP AKA. And that's a little bit more secure way of doing it. And, and as the 3GPP standardization actually want us to move forward to. But it still requires some manual configuration. Of course, we have tried some device here. We have a separate software from some vendors, and here Samsung is one of those who actually can hand out support for that. 
of course, we have to uh, ask vendors to actually add support for that. Microsoft Windows 7 supported with the drivers from Intel and third-party Windows client, they are available to do this. And also Android clients are also available. And of course, the, the conclusion here we have uh, so far, the Wi-Fi is a really good complement to 3G and 4G here. Mainly to 3G in the first step, but of course the 4G will come since there isn't so many devices with the 4G and the Wi-Fi in it yet. We have a couple of those in, in the market, but the 3G device with the Wi-Fi on it is more out there. Indoor coverage is, is also a problematic uh, when it comes to mobile network to, to cover inside and so on. And of course, the, the Wi-Fi can in some time deliver higher band within in, uh, within the small areas. For example, if you have a football arena or similar to that, you have a huge amount of people coming in with the different uh, smartphones and device and uh, giving us a hard time to, to cope with that, with the 3G network and also the 2G network. Of course, you, you can do offload with this and, and so on, but of course, you have to have a, a secure Wi-Fi service because that's the way our customer expect us to uh, produce. So no one can can actually see what you are doing on the device. And of course, all those uh, devices coming out now, they are addicted to, to Wi-Fi in some way. And of course, we need to follow the stream here. So uh, our strategy here is, of course, to adopt and, and meet the increasing uh, demand here for Wi-Fi at least, and all mobile data, of course. The conclusions from our launch here of SIM authentication is that, uh, well, it's, it's extremely critical for uh, doing offload. And of course, the launch generated a huge uptake of the Wi-Fi usage, and uh, that's mainly because the SIM users in some some instances that they even do not know if they are connected or, or not. Wi-Fi is turned on on the device and they are, well, just walking by and, and the device will connect and of course disconnect when it's when, when the user are, are leaving the area. But if you have a, a great network, the white holes in between there won't be so big. And, and that's a little bit why the, uh, the experience to use this is quite ex excellent since uh, they, they're not aware if they're using 3G or Wi-Fi. They, the only thing they know is that, well, it's good coverage here. It's working great, and, and, and that's, uh, that's good for us. This is actually, we have been working with this in, in almost eight years with the SIM authentication, and, and we have a... a platform that run the first test and so on and then but we found out that uh, it didn't cope with the live network traffic when it reaches a couple of thousand users and and uh, that's uh, a little bit uh, why we, we swap the platforms and, and get a good si system of course this is a really good uh, successful launch with the sim authentication it's growing every day and that's that's really good so what we are going to um, carry on here with, the, uh, of course, we, we will increase the Wi-Fi footprints and, and uh, perhaps mainly in dense areas. And of course, try to promote all, all the terminals so they will support SIM authentication. And in that area, of course, the roaming is, is the next one. We have done trials with the roaming, of course, and, and uh, it's quite simple to obtain and maintain, so that's important. On the development side, uh, we are evaluating the new uh, Hotspot 2.0, and, and uh, that is mainly building on, on the 11U standard just uh, ratified not so long ago. So it's quite new, but that will support a lot of functionality when you're doing roaming. You don't have to add the, the profiles for roaming part network and so on you can actually in the in the uh, beam send out the roaming capabilities of the network and of course the uh, the next part will be to integrate the the core for for the wi-fi and and uh, the 3gpp core so uh, 
we can have some common policies and, and quota management uh, in the network. So we, we can have a similar 3G, 4G, 2G service as the Wi-Fi. When it comes to APN and corporate APN, we will also evaluate uh, the concept of that as if we can add that as well. In that case, the, all the mobile networks uh, can utilize the, the Wi-Fi as well. Thank you for uh, listening to my presentation here, and now I will hand over to Torbjörn from Attilu. Thank you, Tor. That's a really, really interesting story, and I'm sure everybody is very satisfied with hearing the whole history, the challenges, and the solutions that you have found for your very, very large network. At this point in time, I'm going to spend some 10 minutes just talking a little bit about Aptilo and the solution that we have and what we're providing. And um, we feel that we know carrier class Wi-Fi. We have been deployed, uh, as I indicated before, uh, with over 120 service providers in 60 countries, and among those 30 mobile operator Wi-Fi deployments. We have capabilities to handle a multitude of Wi-Fi business models and payment options. And the great, the great thing about Wi-Fi is that it caters for and, and enables so many different ways for how to deploy this. We have done many large-scale carrier Wi-Fi deployments. You heard Telia Sonar, of course, is one of them with their 25,000 access points or so, and there's a number of other networks out there being built or have been built of, of similar or approaching uh, the same size. And uh, there's a number of deployments both in, in the Americas, in North and South America, in Europe, Africa, and Asia Pacific. Along with this, there's also a vast experience with what we call verticals, or essentially the business verticals that the operators can offer to their B2B or business-to-business -business offerings. Not only is it about building a Wi-Fi network, but also about teaming up with different kind of hospitality, healthcare, municipalities, airport enterprises, and so on. And therefore, we have built those kind of features into the solution. And the fact that we have been around for 10 years at this point in time, uh, very demanding customers, we built a lot, of in, a lot of different requirements into the product, uh, so it becomes a really a, a modular solution. So the Aptilo Mobile Data Offloading Solution, uh, there's three pillars of this. The first one is the carrier class Wi-Fi, and to manage this, there is a need for a service management platform. The second piece is SIM authentication in order to enable a completely seamless end user experience and with the full security similar to 3G connectivity. And for that, there is a SIM authentication server. And the last piece is innovative integration with mobile core and OSSBSS for different kind of policy and charging. And for that, there is a policy service integration to the product offering. And to put this into context, we have the overview on this slide for mobile data offloading to Wi-Fi. On this slide, we have at the bottom left-hand corner the 3G network, the base stations, and they're all leading traffic into the mobile core consisting of different kind of gateways such as GGSN, there's deep packet inspection gateways, there's PCRF for policy controllers, there's the OSS, BSS, and HLR for the home location register. Um, on the right-hand side, we have the Wi-Fi networks, and they, in one way or another, of course, consist of the Wi-Fi access points. There's a need for an access controller, of which Aptilo offers such controller to the market, but there's also a number of other players on the market which we interact with. And then there are the different kind of Wi-Fi networks. Of course, the operators own Wi-Fi networks, there's also many different hotel or retail chains that are building Wi-Fi networks. There are wireless ISPs that are different cable DSL operator Wi-Fi networks, and of course also international Wi-Fi roaming. And to tie all these things together, we are offering the Aptilo mobile offloading solution. These are the pieces and the three pillars that I previously talked about and how that fits into this picture. We have the first pillar, which is the carrier class Wi-Fi on the right-hand side, and for the integration 
and connectivity into the mobile core that are SIM authentication and the policy and charging. And I will be addressing each one of these three aspects. So the carrier class Wi-Fi piece is the aspect that is looking at and interconnecting with the different Wi-Fi networks. This is the area and the servers that are installed in a central location in a data center where all the services are defined for Wi-Fi. This is where the management of the Wi-Fi services are all handled. And it will handle a multitude of different login methods that are web-based, that are client-based methods, that are automatic, semi-automatic, and manual methods. There are both prepaid and postpaid capabilities built into the solution uh, with quota management and, and remember the allowances and things like that. This is a solution that has been deployed and certified with all the widely available Wi-Fi vendors. There's a, there's a tendency sometimes to think that since Wi-Fi uh, after the access point is pure IP connectivity, everything should be simple. But implementing the different end user scenarios and use cases and, and interactions with different nodes does have a number of interoperability aspects that we have been able to overcome and how we integrate with the different access controllers of the, the access point vendors or with the Aptila controller or also the different kind of standalone gateway uh, controllers and vendors that are out there. So that's managing and handling the operator's own Wi-Fi network. On top of that, in order for the different partner networks to work in a good way, and there are some operators that see partner networks as a really important piece to accomplish the footprint, there is also a need to manage those kind of roaming relationships. So we used to showing up in one of those networks, we'll get authenticated and we'll get set back into the mobile offloading solution and we'll be looking at what it, it allows for the user in those networks and send that back. And then the data and the accounting data is being sent back into this solution, which means we'll also be doing the roaming, etc. I indicated before also vertical business offerings to hospitality, how that will fit into an enterprise environment, et cetera. And these features are also provided in this solution. And at the end of the day, you need to know how much is being used in the network and what is happening, and therefore statistics and reporting is a very key aspect. The second piece to this is the SIM authentication. And this is the piece that will take the Wi-Fi authentication, what is happening over the Wi-Fi network, and in this case, it provides a completely seamless end-user scenario. And we're completely able to leverage the identity security of the SIM card and translate that and do the connectivity into the HLR for a full SIM authentication. Not only do we authenticate the user, but of course, we also need to calculate the number of keys that are being used for the access points to do the encryption of the Wi-Fi link. And this is a very important aspect of using the standard called 802.1x. This means that the connectivity will be fully encrypted, and we're providing the keys and rolling keys, etc., and sending that down into the Wi-Fi network. Another network uh, architecture aspect is the fact that there are a number of HLRs that have upgrade capabilities to take uh, SIM authentications into the HLR, but we have to remember that this means that all the thousands of nodes, and we heard Tori talking about Pelia in this case that have 25,000 access points. And when it comes to the technical details about this, each one of these access points is actually a radius authentication client, which means that the links has to be fine, and therefore the Aptila mobile offloading solution with the SIM authentication server creates an aggregation of all those thousands of, of authentication links into one single one link that will go into the HLR itself. In order to fit into the different kind of networks requirements and scenarios that are out there, we provide flexibility with S7, SIGTRAN, uh, diameter, etc. And we can, of course, also connect to multiple HLR nodes. 
The last piece to this is the policy and charging integration. After the user has been authenticated, for instance, by a SIM card or through other means, there is a need to do a lookup and a validation of what kind of Wi-Fi services should this individual be entitled to. Usually those are deployed in various different areas in the operator's back end. There are aspects about whether a user has prepaid or postpaid, and then in another area there is a definition of what kind of speed or what kind of priority or what kind of service this should be um, provided. So what we do is that we do multiple policy lookups in the different nodes in the back end. And by doing this, we can have common policies with the 3G network altogether. There could be also some additional unique Wi-Fi policies, and that can be added separately at, with no problems. And after the usage has been handled, if the built-in prepaid and postpaid charging and billing is not used in the, in, in the Wi-Fi service management itself, and instead want to integrate with the 3G prepaid system or billing, that is, of course, something that's provided in here as well. And for devices that do not support SIM authentication, uh, we shouldn't forget about other methodologies such as even SMS and using one-time passwords as a good way to identify the user itself and, and make that a username password. And then that can, in itself can be combined with automatic uh, remembering the, the identity and MAC address of the, of the user itself and the device. So to summarize the entire offloading area, and after having had the opportunity of providing these kind of solutions and experiences from both Telia Sonner and ourselves here, I would like to say that there is a truly, truly a great opportunity for service providers at this point. This is happening now. We have Wi-Fi footprint that is being built will strongly build a loyalty from end users. This has been proven. We have seen numerous cases where operators have built Wi-Fi, and we can hear when we speak to end users, well, of course, I use this or that operator because with that, I can use Wi-Fi, and it doesn't cost me much, or it's something that I can use in a readily available, and it's really easy to use. There's also really a strong business case to look at for offloading. Of course, the starting point and the assumptions are different from different operators, but there is a very strong business case to alleviate the high traffic areas from some of this capacity. And we shouldn't forget about the fact that 3G is a tremendous fallback option if you implement the solution right so it's an automatic login, automatic user experience, then you can seamlessly go between those. So to be able to go into the 3G areas and then enhance that by going into Wi-Fi. It's also here now. It's really ready and it is happening. There's an enormous amount of Wi-Fi devices that are capable of doing this, and uh, there are many, many more to come. Not all devices are capable of the SIM authentication methods that we've been telling you about, but there are many different pragmatic approaches to making different kind of devices automatic or semi-automatic login or, and uh, authentication into the network. We are involved in, in numerous, numerous Wi-Fi projects among many operators today. So this is really the time to build footprint and, and provide this uh, to the end users. Building the network and creating the services has to be done in a wise way. We're not suggesting people would not do it wisely, but there are quite a few uh, things that need to be thought of. One of the absolutely most important things that we see and the lessons learned that we've seen and heard is the aim for an automatic or seamless user experience. If you do that, this is a, a truly, truly important aspect to enable more users not only the users that are early adopters, but also all the users that have devices that can do Wi-Fi. The second most important thing is to adopt a very simple and an easy to understand business model. People don't generally like to complicate things. They would like it to be easily understood, and, and that's one of the best advices that we can give as well. 
When it comes to the Wi-Fi network itself, it needs to be deployed in a way that it really can last. We need to use uh, high-quality Wi-Fi infrastructure and not to forget good backhaul bandwidth all the way back to the Wi-Fi access points, which means that it can really provide a high-speed environment. And at the end, also remember to choose an offloading solution carefully. You need to have a future-proof solution that can cater for your own subscribers with the services that you have, but you also need to cater for any visitors, roamers, temporary users, etc. And there is a number of things happening on the market when it comes to devices, and that will also uh, mean that there will be new use cases. So it has to be a very flexible solution that can cater for those things. And as an operator, uh, you need to integrate well with the existing core, the existing back end, and therefore you need to have the hooks and the ways to handle that. So we're coming to the end of this. We would like to open up for Q&A. Thank you very much for, uh, for listening so far, and we're hoping that there will be many interesting questions um, from you all in the audience as well. Thank you. Thanks very much, guys, and thank you to our audience for viewing. We will now open up the floor for our experts to take your questions.